Hi everyone, I'm back. It's uh, Saturday morning, it's uh, 10. Yes, I'm uh, really early today. And uh, I, this is my new sponsored uh, sponsor list. Sponsored sponsor list, yeah, right. So this is the updated list as of this morning, 10 o'clock. So I wanna thank everyone for sponsoring my channel. I greatly appreciate it. And I had a couple of things to talk about. Um, I'm going to do a, uh, a varnish on this one. This is just a little test, uh, a little tester. It's uh, 15 by 15, and I'm going to show you how I varnish because I get a lot of questions about the varnishing. First off, I'd like to show you what it looks like. <coughs> Now, I have some that I'm working on, and as you can see, this is what it looks like. Can you see how smooth that is? There is not one single brush stroke on there, as you can see. Let me get it up a little closer. There you go. Now, what you'll have is when you uh, start varnishing, because you never varnish in one go, you always put layer, layer, layer. But as you can see, you have these <clears throat> little pinholes all over the place. And they, sh they do show in the first couple of layers. But I just keep on varnishing <coughs> until they are all gone. Now here's another one. Can you see how smooth that is? There is no brush stroke whatsoever. You don't see them. Here's another one. Really smooth. Now you can build this up even more than, than I have done here. And once um, you get so thick that you don't see the uh, canvas anymore, because now you can still see the canvas. But once you get so thick that you don't see the canvas anymore, then you're starting to go like the resin look, like it's uh, like a top coat, a resin coat. And you can achieve that by just keep on layering the uh, varnish on top of it. And that works out pretty well. Now, for the people that don't have brushes like this, these are the brushes I sell in my uh, shop. They are really flexible. And that's the thing you want to look for. You have to have really fine hairs, so pig hair won't really do. I don't like pig hairs that much. I like the syn synthetic uh, fibers, and it has to be really flexible, as you can see. So when you pull it over, you know, it only takes three strokes and you've got your top covered but if you don't have these I'll, I'll do it um, with one of those just you know one of those art brushes so as you can see also this is a synthetic fiber and I'm seeing that there's a little bit of a <laughs> gooey goo going on in there so what I like to do is take one of these combs and just comb right through it and see what comes off because you don't want debris in your uh, layer in your varnish layer because that'll stick out that's pretty uh, pretty sure about that <laughs> okay now one thing you have to take uh, in consideration is let this stuff dry because it's very important. Don't over rush it. Don't think, ah, oh, it's okay. I'm gonna just gonna varnish it. This one, I don't know how long that has been drying, but for a pretty long time. So what I do is I take a little squirt bottle like this and I put a tiny bit on here, not too much. And then take the brush, make sure it's wet on both sides and soak it up and then I just brush over everything like this you see some dripping off here doesn't matter as long as you go up down and across just make sure that the whole thing is covered in the first layer of varnish Now, there might be little brush strokes that you see right now, but because it's really thin, by the time this is dry, I promise you there will be no brush strokes. 
as you can see it pulls up the color just a little bit now for the sides what I do is usually I just drop a little on the side like this make sure my brush is wet and go in the corners because that's where the uh, the canvas folds over the the frame and that's it and then do the same down here just a little bit on there tap it in go over it once or twice make sure the corners aren't totally fill filled with varnish and that's that now we have two sides covered as you can see now we go to this side And there we go. Make sure the corners aren't overfilled. And then we go to the last one. There it is. Okay, now as you can see here, it all flattened out. And that's because it was very this is a very very thin layer and that's what you have to go for you know it's not about getting that nice high glossy look it's all about just covering up this uh, canvas and if you think you made a mistake you didn't get it all you can add dots of varnish no problem at all and you can do this with every single varnish you have because it's not about the um, it's not about the brand it's not about anything but it's about just giving it that first cover of varnish okay so I've done it twice I think we're good to go we're gonna let this dry Here's another one that I did. As you can see, no brush strokes whatsoever. It's still in the uh, <clears throat> the linen, uh, the canvas phase. But this one I'm going to really give it another coat. Uh, just as long as it, you know, I want it to look like uh, resin. So this would be the third or fourth layer. I just put that on. Make sure my brush is nice and wet. You want it both sides soak, soaking with the uh, with the varnish, and then I just go along the sides, pull it down like that, and make sure I go across and down like this, and you'll see some buildup on the sides. And that's when I take my brush and go along the sides. Now this is for your, um, the first two layers I do like I showed you with the bottle on the side. And then look at that, how flat that already is. See that? So the first two I do with the uh, bottle on the side like this, like I'm showing you right here. And then when you're to layer three, four, five, you just do it like this. So that's it. There's, as you can see, there's a little bit more here on the sides, but don't touch it. You know, it's nice and smooth. There are no holes, dents whatsoever in the, uh, in the varnish, as you can see. And we're just gonna leave it just like that. Okay, I got a really good tip from a viewer and um, I would like to share that with you. If you have brushes that are totally gone hard and you are ready to throw them out, uh, she told me, you know, the thing that she did was put it in, do uh, in the fabric softener, right? So you get a little jar and you might want to, you know, make sure that your bristles don't hit the bottom. So you can do that with an, uh, a little horizontal thing and you can stick your brush to it. But the thing is that when you put it in fabric softener, it will sort of work its way into the bristles. 
and that's how you can clean up a brush gone hard so we're going to try that but not with these brushes because i'm i'm doing a lot of stuff today now this is a skin from a, a couple of weeks ago let me get me some more room here So what you're seeing here, as you can see, it's a skin. This was on my table. You know, this is the plastic that covers my, my, my table. And I just did one last swipe over it. And this is what happened. So this is how it dried. Now, a lot of people are asking me, what do you do with skins? And I say, well, well, you can do anything with your skins. See that? You can just peel this whole thing off. Let me make a start here there it comes oops see how easy it it lets go of the plastic especially when it's a little thicker you can just peel that thing right off there it is now you can do a lot of things with this um i like i really like this bit here that is really beautiful let me show you that up close let me see, get you in focus here. Look at that, how beautiful that is. That is really gorgeous. And there was a little bit, but it's got a little tear in it, so I can't make pictures of it anymore. But I kind of like this little bit here, but as you can see, a little tear. So um, what you can do with it is use a punch, put, stick it onto a greeting card, whatever, but you can also just cut what you need and put it on a wooden box. Now, it's not too difficult to do. And I'm looking if I have a box here somewhere. I don't see one. Let me get one. Okay. This is the box. Now... Uh, these uh, little boxes are really cheap what you can do is paint the lid well I'm just giving ideas here guys you know you can do whatever you want but what you can do is paint the lid and then cut out pieces to do here the bottom of the box so you would need four sides or maybe you want to do the back you want to paint this a, a certain color because usually it's standing like that so no one will see the, the back but what you can do is just cut this up and uh, what I would do is just stick the box on there and outline it cut it out and then you can paste it on the sides have a nice color for the lid put a pour in top or just a picture of someone and that's a pretty nice gift to give away now so these skins have so many possibilities but you just have to let your mind run free because everything you can imagine you can do with this so you could cut it out to put in jewelry you could do like i said greeting cards cover a box um, make um, one of those little tiny placemat things out of it coasters right you can do anything with this because, and the thing is this is the back and that's not so uh, <laughs> beautiful this is the front where I swiped it and as you can see it's pretty thick this is all paint so there's so many things you can do I can't even start telling you how many things but you'll have fun with it I'm pretty sure I'm going to take some pictures of this because I really like what's going on here maybe even this one here this little one here that's pretty cool okay guys oh yeah about the drone now the drone has been you know a, a sort of a pain in the rear um, I ordered one and I'm all ecstatic I'm thinking oh cool I'm gonna get a drone I'm gonna get some uh, fly time to show you guys then I got an email from customs yep Customs got their little greedy claws into my drone and now it's waiting in a big, I don't know, some sort of a warehouse 
where um, I had to tell them or show them that you don't tell customs, you have to prove yourself. So I had to send them my um, the invoice I got from the drone. So now they're going to calculate how much money I have to pay. So it's, you know, it's not about the money. Usually they come, the post uh, guy comes to the door and he has a little thing and you just pay at the door. But I don't know why they're making such a big deal about my drone because it's almost, well, it's a really cheap drone. It's not one like thousand dollars or something like that. See, the thing is that in the USA, you can import for two thousand dollars without having the, the whole customs thing going on. Uh, the only thing you can't do is have um, counterfeit stuff, you know. You're not allowed to do that, I know. We we aren't either, so. But you can import something like $2,000, and in Holland it's 20, 20 euros. And they should really uh, work on that, and they should um, do something about that. It's not encouraging at all to, to buy something abroad, because you always get hit with taxes and more taxes and more taxes but it'll be here pretty soon i'm pretty sure it's going to be here next week and then i'll take you out flying and i have promised that the first takeoff i'm going to film i'm going to video that so that might be the first and the last if i crash the drone <laughs> you never know i've never had one of those joysticky things i've done a lot of um gaming but i always game with a joystick and once all those little controllers came in, I sort of didn't feel the need to game anymore because I don't like controllers. I, I like the joystick. Yeah. Okay, guys. Gonna wrap this one up and put it on YouTube. Then you know what's coming. We're gonna be doing a couple of pours today. I'm not sure exactly how or what or what size or what cut well i do know the colors because i got a couple of colors in my mind that i really want to do something with and it involves uh, orange and a really intense blue that's what i'm gonna do so i'll see you in the next video love you all to pieces and i'm, I'm really happy about the support i'm getting so thanks all for watching see you in the next video later